true justice and proper judgment will proceed under the dominion of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and none other. All right, Shalom. I want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rakakudash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well in grace and peace to you, elect around the four winds, believing and pushing this truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rokaya from the GMS Orlando camp. And uh, tonight we're just going to be rolling in the spirit. All right. Um, the main focal point of tonight's lesson is going to be the justice and judgment that will proceed under the dominion of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. All right. Because what this world and our nation desperately needs is true justice and proper judgment. Because the world that we're currently under is one of injustice and the perversion of judgment, which has led to the which has led to the chaotic state that the world is in today. All right, and which has also led to the constant shame that is heaped upon our people daily. All right, the constant atrocities that are committed against our people daily. All right, and the inspiration for the night's lesson comes from the video that you've seen at the beginning of this lesson. All right, which was sent to me by my sister earlier today, along with a question. Which um, sparked the inspiration for tonight's lesson. All right, because there's a few lessons that we can glean from that video. All right, Lord, when this is edifying unto you, elect. So uh, without further ado, we're just going to hop straight into it. All right, before we get into this article, I want to deal with the question first. All right. And uh, the question that she sent me was, why do, these, why do these things happen? All right. And when will they stop? And the, and the answer to that question is contained here in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. All right, because uh, that's a question that's being asked frequently now, now more so than ever. You know, now since the Lord has broadcasted this truth on a more broader spectrum. All right, the question of why we're in this predicament is popping up more frequently. All right, and the answer to that question of why we find ourselves in this state of captivity, in this state of shame, you know, in this state of, of, of disgrace amongst these nations. It's contained here within the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. All right. Start at the first verse. It reads. Well, let's get Deuteronomy 1 and 1 so you can see who the book of Deuteronomy is being addressed to. This is Deuteronomy 1 and 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the wet Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and the Zahab. All right, so these are the words that Moses is speaking unto the nation of Israel, all right, from the Lord. Now, verse 1 of Deuteronomy 28 reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, meaning listen, Unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy power will set thee on high above all nations. All right, so it was prophesied unto our nation, all right, or said unto our nation, that if we were to listen unto the words of the Lord, that the Lord would set us above all the nations of the earth. All right, we will be the pinnacle of every nation on the planet earth. And the blessings, all right, that were prophesied to happen unto us, for listening unto the Lord are contained within verses 1 through 14. All right. Now, when you get verse 15, this was uh, prophesied to happen unto our nation. All right. For not listening unto the voice of the Lord. This is verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou shalt, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right. So this curses were prophesied to happen unto our nation for disobedience. All right. Now, the curses are contained from verse 16 on down to 68. All right. And these are our key identi uh, identifiers. All right. To who we are today. All right. Because as a nation, we fell away from our heritage. We fell away from our language, our culture. All right. The understanding of who we were, the understanding of. Who our power is, the understanding of prophecy. 
All right, pursuing Jeremiah, the 17th chapter and the fourth verse. All right. Now, here in these latter days, the Lord has left us the sign and the wonder of these curses so that we're able to identify ourselves. All right. Of who we are, because these curses that are contained within verse 16 on down to 68 closely reside to one nation on the planet Earth. And that is the nation of Israel, which we see today to be so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos and so-called Native American Indians, along with this, uh, uh, the, the Israelite foreigners who are scattered amongst these other nations who may look and speak like the other nations. But in fact, their seed line and their spirit goes back into the nation of Israel. All right. Now, let's read some of these curses just to prove that point. All right. Of how we're able to identify ourselves all right, today and, and a part of why we find ourselves in this predicament. All right, because of our disobedience. Now, um, this is Deuteronomy 28. And uh, let's get verse 40, 40, 43. It says, The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. All right, and this is why we find ourselves at the tail end of every society and every e economy, all right, no matter where we're scattered. Because as a nation, we don't have the means nor the resources to lend to, the, to these other nations. We're the ones doing the borrowing, <laughs> all right? These other nations are doing the lending to us because we don't have resources. We don't have commodities. We don't have anything of value outside of who we are. All right, outside of the spirit that the Lord gave us. All right, prophecy. But um, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. All right. And this is the why. All right. Why do we find ourselves in this predicament, in this situation? Because of our disobedience against the Lord. All right. Let's get another one. Let's get this in Baruch. Make it's chapter four. No, chapter three. And let's see. Bear with me real quick. Um uh, trying to think of how it's worded. Four and uh, verse six, ye were sold to the nations not for your destruction, but because ye moved the heavenly father to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies, for ye provoked him that made you by sacrifices and uh, by sacrificing unto devils and not to the heavenly father. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. All right, and this is why. All right, we find ourselves in this predicament. All right, because of our disobedience and our iniquities against the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. So, to answer the latter part of that question of when we're going to, uh, when these things are going to stop, all right, let's get this here in uh, Isaiah chapter 9. And I'll uh, start at verse 6. And actually, before we get this, let's get this too in Habakkuk chapter 1. Because when she asked me that question, immediately I went to this here in uh, Habakkuk chapter 1. And um, I'm going to start at verse 1 because, you know, this is a question that the prophets ask frequently. You know, when are these, when are these things going to stop? You know, when, how long is this going to last, Lord? You know, uh, when, when is it going to end? You know, when is our shame going to be put to an end? When are you going to... When are you gonna? When are you gonna let these? When are you gonna stop this? This is Habakkuk chapter one, verse one. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. 
Why dost thou shew me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are they, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth not go, never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. All right, and this is what we see, and this is our gripe. This is why uh, a part of the reason why we sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, pursuing Ezekiel nine and four, because wrong judgment is proceeding forth, man. Wrong judgment is proceeding, man. Wrong judgment is proceeding in nerve today, man. And it seems as if the wicked is compassing about the righteous. But we know through the spirit that the Lord is raising up the judges as of um, as at the first pursuing Isaiah, the first chapter in the 26th verse. All right. Starting with his remnant. All right. And under the, the under the dominion of Yahweh Shai. All right. King David and 144,000. True justice and proper judgment is going to proceed forth in the earth, which is what we're waiting for, man, which is what we're praying for. All right. And that is when these things are going to stop. All right. Under the government of our Lord. That's when the shame is going to stop. That's when the atrocities are going to be put to an end. That's when justice and judgment are going to be rendered in the earth. When the government of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is established, man. We need this. We need the earth needs this. Our nation needs this. This is Isaiah 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. All right. And this is when all right, these things are going to stop. All right. Things like what you've seen in that video. All right, the murder uh, uh, of James Byrd Jr. All right, and, and, and countless others, man. You know, that's that's just one of, of many dicks who have been put to death grievously. Who have been put to shame for, uh, in open shame. You look up uh, modern day lynchings. It was three so-called Negroes, all right, three Southern Kingdom Jakes that got hung two years ago. Strung up, three of them. The shame still hasn't stopped. The atrocities still haven't stopped. The improper judgment has, is still proceeding forth. And the only thing that is going to quench this iniquity, that is going to quench this injustice and, these, and, and, and the perversion of judgment is Yahweh Shai's government, the throne of David, Yahweh Shai's rulership. That's what's going to quench this wicked system. That's what's going to quench our shame. And the atrocities that are committed against us. Let's get this. In Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5. Behold, the day has come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And this is Yahweh Shai in the Old Testament. All right. This is Yahweh Shai in the Old Testament. Prophesied to do what? It says that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper. And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. All right. This is when it's going to stop. When Yahweh Shai, all right, his, his dominion is established on the earth. That's when true justice and judgment is going to proceed forth, man. And this is what we need. This is what we, we, we yearn for. If you're not, something's wrong with you. If you're not, there's something wrong with you. This is what we need desperately. All right. And this is what's coming. All right. Not only do we need it, but it's coming. All right. Sooner than what we think. Sooner than when we think. Two between uh, Romans 13 and 11. Our salvation is nearer than when we believe. All right. The Lord is coming to establish a right, uh, uh, everlasting government. One that's, uh, uh, its foundations are rooted upon righteousness, rooted upon uh, uh, an everlasting standard. Let's get this in um, um, Nahum chapter 1, verse 3. 
It says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. And in this world, the wicked are acquitted daily, constantly. All right, there's a constant perversion of judgment. There's a constant bribery of judgment. There's a constant uh, uh, injustice. But when the Lord comes to judge this earth and establish his kingdom, the wicked will not be acquitted. All the atrocities that, that, these, that these nations have brought upon our people, chiefly the nation of Edom, are going to be recompensed. Best believe a recompense is coming to the so-called white man and to all these nations who have brought constant atrocity and constant shame to our nation. The Lord ain't going to quit none of that shit. This is what we pray for. This is, and this is why we stand boldly in the face of these nations. Because the true judge, the proper judge is coming, man. You see, in this article, right? It's uh, the murder of James Byrd Jr. Um, it says June 7, 1998, in East Texas, a town of Jasper. Byrd was dragged to his death after being chained by the ankles to the back of a pickup truck by three white uh, Edomite men and John William yada 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 says see it says the murder uh, Bird spent the day drinking and socializing with friends and family in Jasper Across town from his apartment as he was walking home that Saturday, Barry, Brewer, and King offered him a ride and he upset and he accepted. The three men have been driving around Jasper and Barry's pickup truck for much of the evening, drinking beer and looking for young women. Uh, witness reported seeing Bird riding in the bed of a gray pickup with two or three men in the cab between 2.30 and 2.45 a.m. Barry later testified that he had stopped and given Bird a ride and, and said he didn't know Bird but had recognized him as somebody who frequently walked around Jasper. Hey, and this is why the scriptures tell us this. All right, you know, this here in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus 12 and 10. It says, never trust thine enemy for like eyes, iron rusted swords is wickedness. All right, the Lord already gave us to get go and to get up on these devils, man. He told us never to trust them. That would have alleviated that whole problem. But since Jake thinks this, this is a place that he rests, all right, this is, this is uh, pieces and cream. All right, he got in a pickup truck and ultimately ended up dying a grievous death. The Lord told us never to trust our enemies. Why? Because this is the same man that has put us under the knife and gavel countless numbers of times, man. He's shown us who he is. Has he not? The Lord said never to Trust thine enemy for like his iron rusted swords is wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped the looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust have not altogether been wiped away. All right. These devils are humbling themselves quick, but take heed of that. We're in the midst of a war, man. We've been at war. The war ain't stopped. And this is why we need Yahweh Shah's dominion. Because the war ain't going to stop until Yahweh Shah comes and put all this shit to rest. The basis of men has been allowed to run this earth and has been allowed to pervert judgment for way too long now. And the Lord ain't holding his tongue no more concerning his wickedness. All right. And the Lord is starting to speak by way of his mouth speaks to prophets. All right. And pretty soon. All right, this witness, I mean, this testimony that we have against this devil all right, is going to lead to his conviction. This is going to be a thousand years of captivity and then complete and utter destruction. Thus saith the Lord. Justice and judgment is desperately needed in the earth and it's coming by way of Yahweh Shai's government. All right. And, thing, and, and shame and atrocities like what we've seen in that video are going to be put to fucking rest. Along with the so-called white man. Thus saith the Lord. With that being said, Shalom. Stay up.